Dr. Jim's been a great teacher the past couple years, but sometimes I wonder how much of his PhD he gets to use when he's teaching options. So I sat down with Dr. Jim to find out if I'm cut out for a finance PhD. Dr. Jim, what are options and how do people use these to speculate? Yeah, so options are a derivative instrument, which means that their value is, deri is derived from some underlying stock, some underlying instrument. And what mm -hmm. makes options unique is every contract is for 100 shares of that underlying stock, like Microsoft, Apple, Tesla, whatever. And so essentially, you have an opportunity with a little amount of capital to control a, a largely sized notional position that might be 100 shares of Tesla or 100 shares of Apple or whatever. And so when it comes to speculation, that can be very attractive to a lot of traders that are looking for, you know, a directional move or they're looking for a change in volatility or they're looking to play even the time decay itself. You know, you can do all these things with, op with options in a very strategic way. And because you're able to use a little bit of capital to control 100, 200, 300 shares, depending on how many contracts you have, uh, that would be, you know, probably the biggest reason why options are used for speculation. Options can be a little bit confusing getting into and a little, a little intimidating, I would say, because it seems like there's a few more moving parts and those parts being the option Greeks, which I want to get into. So what's theta actually, Dr. Jim, in terms uh, of viewing option contracts? Mm -hmm. Well, because options have a fixed expiration date, they also have this thing called theta, which essentially means that the extrinsic value that's in the option contract it has to be equal to zero at expiration. Now, at every moment before expiration, it's not going to be zero because there's always risk that the stock could move or that volatility could change or whatever. And so from a pricing dynamic standpoint, extrinsic value is always greater than zero before expiration. But at expiration, it's equal to zero. And so what theta does is it measures how that extrinsic value decays on a daily basis as it heads towards expiration. And then, of course, from there, you know, if you buy options, you're negative theta. If you sell options, you're positive theta. I mean, that is very much the tip of the iceberg, but that is a good start to understanding what theta measures. Buying options, theta seems like it's going to work against you a little bit. And if you're selling the options, it seems like you're going to be collecting the theta. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. If you're buying options, you have negative theta. That means that that time decay that occurs day by day as the option goes towards expiration, that's working against you. It's working against you because when you buy an option, you want its price to rise so you can sell it at some higher value than you bought it for. If you sell an option, theta is working for you because you want to sell the option price up here and then buy it back down here. So that natural tendency of theta to push the option price lower is working in your favor. So that kind of brings me to delta now. We got theta. What's delta and how do people use it? Delta is probably the most flexible of all the Greeks because it can be used a few different ways. And so some of the more common ways that delta is used is number one, delta is going to show you how your option price is going to move when the underlying stock moves. So if a delta, for example, is 30, that means that the option move is going to move about 30% with the stock move. So if the stock moves up by a dollar, you can expect your option price to change by 30 cents. If the delta was 45, if the stock moved by a dollar, you could expect your option price to change by four, by 45 cents. So it's effectively, you know, a percentage of the whole in a way. And the reason why that is, is a second way that people like to use delta in that it is also a share equivalent in terms of the, the, the measurement that it gives you for how much stock you are controlling. Right. Remember, a couple of minutes ago, we talked about how every option contract is 100 shares. Well, if I have an option contract that's 100 shares, but my delta is only 40, another way to interpret that number is it's going to feel like I'm controlling 40 of those 100 shares. Not the full 100 shares, not yet. That would happen if the delta were equal to 100. And so those are a couple of ways you begin to use delta and positive delta and negative delta, positive delta. You want the, you know, you want the market or the stock to go higher, negative delta. You want the market or the stock to go lower. And so those are a few very quick, again, tip of the iceberg type stuff, ways in which you can use delta. Delta can kind of show us our directional bias and how aggressive we are on that directional bias. Did I get that right? Right. A higher delta closer to 100 per one lot is going to be that you're more aggressive. You're, you have a stronger directional bias. If it's less, you know, if it's if it's much lower than 100, like 20 or 30 or 35, then you're a lot less aggressive. You have less directional bias. That's right. So we got delta, we got theta, gamma. What is gamma? How do option view? How do option sellers and buyers view these things? What is it, Dr. Jim? 
Mm -hmm. Man, I thought we were going with the easy questions today, and they had to drop gamma on my doorstep. So all of the Greeks, much like everything else in the stock market and in the options market, everything is dynamic. Everything is always changing. Everything is always moving. And so your delta might be 40 right now, but if you check it, you know, at the end of the week, or you check it, you know, in a couple of days, or you check it at the end of the day, it could very much be a different number. It could be 30. It could be 50. It could be whatever. It's going to be always moving with the market. Well, gamma actually shows you how delta itself changes when the underlying stock changes. So the best example that we can use to understand the relationship between delta and gamma is if you think of a car, if you think of a moving car, right? A moving car has effectively two measurements of its movement, the speed and the acceleration. So the speed is showing you how fast it might be going in one direction. Obviously, cars only go in one direction, but assuming that it's moving, right? Delta is like speed. That's going to show you how fast your contract itself is going to move when it comes to directional bias. Well, when you're driving a car, you can speed up or slow down because you have acceleration. That's exactly what gamma shows you too. Gamma shows you how the speed itself, the delta, is going to speed up or slow down. Is the delta going to get stronger? Is the delta going to get weaker? And so that's effectively what gamma measures and its relationship to delta. I was trying to keep it simple, Dr. Jim, but now that we brought up gamma, I am curious about negative gamma. I heard that word floating around and who's a better person to ask than you about this topic? So what is negative gamma, Dr. Jim? That is sending me for a loop. Yeah, that's a tricky one. That's a really, really tricky one. I mean, it took me a long time. I mean, I've been looking at this stuff for many, many years, We're going on a couple of yeah. decades now at this point. And it <laughs> took me a while to really firmly understand negative gamma. So the first thing we want to understand is if you buy options, you're going to be positive gamma. If you sell options, you're going to be negative gamma. So at Tasty Live, we like to sell options. We think there's a lot more opportunity in selling options. And so one thing we need to understand is when we do sell those options, it comes with negative gamma. Now, remember... Okay. Gamma measures how delta changes. And so for, for, the, for the time being, for the next couple of seconds or a couple of minutes, forget about the magnitude of gamma. Forget about the number of gamma. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for what we're trying to understand. Just think of the sign of gamma. Because you have negative gamma, what that means is that given a directional move in the stock, the change in your delta is going to be opposite that directional move of the stock. So that's where the term negative comes into play. Now, obviously, people are going to be Jim, what does that mean? That doesn't make any sense. Can you give me an example? It's very, very simple when you look at an example, like a strategy like a short strangle. If we take a short strangle, we have a short put on the bottom. We have a short call on the top. If the stock rises, if it rallies, and it starts getting closer and closer to our short call, you are going to naturally become bearish on that position. So I have a stock going up. But my deltas on the overall position are going to be going down. They're going to be bearish in nature. That's negative gamma. The same thing is on the other side. Let's say the stock were to go down and start going closer and closer to my short put strike. Now, all of a sudden, the stock went down. My deltas are going to rise. I'm going to be more bullish in nature. So negative gamma, at least at, you know, at the outset, as kind of an introduction to negative gamma, it's just showing you that the movements in the stock and the overall directional bias in your position are going to be moving against each other. They're going to be opposing each other. Stock goes up, you're going to find yourself more bearish. Stock goes down, you're going to find yourself more bullish. What are options, theta, delta, gamma, negative gamma? If I'm a new trader coming in, what's the first thing that I look at? Ooh, absolutely delta. If you're a br if you're a brand new trader, you're just getting started, you know, maybe you haven't even put out you haven't even put on your first trade yet, I would start with delta. Theta, Gamma, Vega, all these other things that'll come with time. I would start with Delta and try to get comfortable with that. If you want to see another genius explain option concepts, click here to watch our video on the best time to trade options.